This video, we're going to have a bit of a look over. It has been requested. I did the Grow What Wi Fi setup on the inverter. It's got the Wi Fi dongle in it. Now, the app that's used on the Grow What system is the Shine, um, Grow What Shine phone, I think it's called. I'm not going to go into how to get the app onto your device and connect it up. That was all on that other video. But I'm going to go over the good and the bad of the app itself. Um, that was what was requested so I shall bring up a screen recording on the old iPad and uh, we'll open up the Shine app here we go so it's called Shine Phone so open it up and then you just drag the screen down and it refreshes it network timeout here we go that's one of the bad things <laughs> and again let's try it again here we go this is looking promising <clears throat> so I'll put this up, let me move the camera to one side and then I can put that I can put this on the screen like that <laughs> So I won't be looking at the camera, I'm looking at what I'm doing So at the top of it, the screen you've got our address obviously You've got your PV capacity, that's the capacity of your solar panels So you add all your numbers up and you just put your capacity in Installation date, then we come down, it's got the weather It's normally wrong Today we've generated 2.2 kilowatt hours and then on the left here you've got generated this month, this month so far has been absolute crap, 105 kilowatt hours and then to the right of that we've got the total kilowatt hours that we've generated since our system has been installed which is 3,360.6, um, don't forget that 0.6. So then we'll scroll down and then we've got like this diagram here, so you've got your PV input at the top that comes down to the inverter. The inverter is the big round bit in the middle. So it obviously goes off to the left and it goes off to the right. Because there was enough, the sun was just out a minute ago. So on the right we've got the house. That's the load on the house. So everything on our consumer unit that is solar powered will be, if we switch it all on, will be on the right hand side. If there's more solar coming in than what the house is requiring, it then dumps the excess into the battery. So the battery's on the right hand side, at the moment we're at 50% and it was dumping 1774 watts into the battery. Import at the bottom, when the battery gets to 20% it automatically, if the sun's not out, it automatically starts charging the battery from the grid. So then you would see an orange light coming from that little pylon up to the inverter and going across to the battery. But when it goes on to grid charging, it's like a, basically a grid bypass, so it'll charge your batteries, but it'll power all the loads as well. Um, now I'm not sure we've never really sort of pushed that limit because we're on three phase, and I've got one phase power in the inverter. So we on the three phases. One phase we've got the Hobbit's oven, and we've got one socket in the kitchen that's on the grid. There's the second phase we've got power in the garage, and the third phase. Uh, we've got a 32 amp feed which runs down, that's the the grid to power the inverter. So that's how our three phases are worked. I have explained this all before, but um, I've derailed myself now. Anyway, let's get back to this app. So down here we've got all these stats. So you've got solar production, storage production, import from grid, export from grid. Now we don't export anything for, you know, to the grid, so that number is totally irrelevant and it always pops up. Load consumption is what the house has used, and you know, in the 24 hour period, and total charge. So it's basically, we've charged up or we've brought into the house 2.2 kilowatts, and then down here, let's refresh the app again because it's not showing up. Here we go. So down here, we get power energy state of charge, charged and discharged. So this will be our clock. So from midnight last night, all the way along, you can see the yellow, It's you can touch these colors to switch the colors off. <clears throat> so let's switch them all off except for solar production. So that's our solar curve so far today. We did hit quite a peak there. These numbers uh, don't show very well on the left hand side, but uh, you get the rough idea. And you can go scroll through the days. So that was yesterday. The blue is charging from the grid and the yellow is solar production. 
And then if I put load consumption on, that's the load on the house. So you can see here in the purple, that's the load. So overnight, probably the fridge and the freezer were kicking in. The boiler might have cut in because we do have the temperature set very low overnight, but it, it still kicks in. And then you see this big spike and a big chunk. That's where we plug the water heater in. So you can do all that. So then if you want a more of an in-depth thing, you can just press this I button and it will bring this up from midnight and it will bring all your numbers. So you've got solar production, storage production, load consumption, import from grid and export from grid. Now export from grid should always be on zero and that will just log everything. So you will notice I said it logs everything. It's a data logger. It's not a um, sort of a streaming device. It's not like real time. So that's that. We can go into um, when the app catches up. Let's just refresh itself again. We can go into state of charge and that'll bring up a graph. So we started off at midnight just under 75% and it's come right down and it's sort of crept back up a little bit. So then we can go charged and discharged and it'll show you for every day of, you know, oh, this is this week. So you only, it only goes back so many days. So on the 21st, we, we, was, we brought that much charged in and that yellow is what we discharged it. So that's all that. Down here, it just tells you your battery percentage and your data logger number, um, charging power, and you know you can bring all that up, do real time data uh, for the day. So you can see we've had some really crap days on here for the year. Last year we did 2,894. So, so far this year we've done 105. <laughs> we'll come back out of that and then on the bottom here we've just got a little bit of trivia so we've reduced 3,350.5 kilograms of CO2 For, now we've reduced that through generating our own electric and not relying on the electric to be generated elsewhere so that's that Go, going on the numbers that we've generated, we've saved 1,334.2 kilograms of coal. That's going on if it's powered by a coal station. And we've reduced deforestation by 185 trees. That's not bad. <laughs> so we have got some other things here. We've got the dashboard, which is just like a general overview. Um, I mean, this is telling us 2.2 kilowatt hours today, the month, the total, the current power coming in. It's obviously dropped, PV capacity, total number of plants, online device, uh, and then you it'll bring up this, you can go back through the years. Um, this is the daily view, you can go on to monthly, so we've only got, we're only in January, so, and then you can go on the year view. And then down the bottom here, you've got the same bit of trivia again. And then it gives you a bit of a weather thing, now that's in, it's sunny and one degree. That said that yesterday, and it was like horrible yesterday, minus bloody one outside during the day. So that's not quite accurate. But um, yeah, there's some other things you can go into. You can go into your, your message center and, and, and all sorts of things like that. So in a nutshell, that is the app. Um, I'll say some things are good and some things are bad. The good thing is you can just open this up on your iPad, your phone, um, where it's Android, iOS, and you can have a quick look and see what is actually happening, see what state your batteries are in, see what power's coming in, and all just general things like that. Um, what The bad thing is, which a lot of people don't realise at the time, is it's called a data logger, and it only logs data every five minutes, which is probably... A lot of people want it in real time. They're like, oh, I want real time information. If you go to the inverter and look on the screen in, in the other room, you'll get real time information. It tells you exactly how many watts is coming in, how many watts has been generated, how many amps is coming in, how many volts, all that kind of thing. It real time, you can look at the inverter. I know some people have got their inverters outside and it's not quite so easy. The app is a data logger. 
you know, the dongle that you plug in is a data logger. It logs data every five minutes, and there's nothing you can do about that. Um, I don't know any other way around it. Now, the, one of the other bad things is connecting up the, the dongle to the router, it then has to connect to the GrowWatt server. So if you don't have an internet connection, this device is absolutely no good to you whatsoever. Uh, it won't function without going to the GrowWatt server. So <laughs> it goes from the dongle to your router to the GrowWatt server, which is probably China or somewhere, I have no idea where it is. Then it comes back to your router and back to your device, <laughs> which is a bit of a nightmare. If their server goes down, you won't get any information. That's a couple of the downsides of this app. We have got it on the computer as well, so we'll have a quick look at that now. You, it is a little bit more in-depth on the computer, so we're going to have a look at that and uh, then we'll finish off this video. So this is the Grow What app on the computer. On this side here, I've made the cursor bigger, so hopefully you can see it. This side here, we've got the uh, the inverter itself. This is the solar panels. This is the house, and this is the batteries. It, it's just a little bit of, of the different way on to the app. And import from grid is over this side. At the moment, we're not importing anything from the grid. At the moment, 281 watts coming in on the panels. House is using 269, so there's 39 watts going into the battery. All very well and good. So over this side, we've got the solar. So we've generated 2.2 today. In total, 3.4 or thereabouts. We've discharged 1.3 kilowatt hours today. And in total, 1.8 megawatt hours. Oh yeah, that's megawatt hours as well. So down here we've got charged, in total we've charged 2.2 uh, today. And then you've got import from grid. In total, we've that's how much we've imported, nothing today. And load consumption on the house. So that's all well and good. So we'll come down here and we've got this pit here, which is pretty much the same as what was on the, the app. So you've got solar, which is in blue load consumption which is in red and dark blue which is imported from grid so what you can do here is you can scroll back through through the days so yesterday this was all load very little solar coming in yesterday um, 200 watts and the most we got yesterday was 600 watts coming in so the load is the blue uh, no the load is the red and the dark blue is import from grid. So you can see here we switched the water heater on just to pull the batteries down enough to then start charging. So it charges the batteries, but it will also... So you can see here that the, the grid is powering the water heater and it's putting a bit extra in there to charge the batteries. So the water heater gets up to temperature and switches itself off. That drops right down. And here it's just charging the battery and you see a spike there when there was a load put on. That was probably the heater or something like that. But we can scroll back through all the days and see all the different readings. If you're so inclined up here, it just tells you what you've actually charged, what storage you've got, and what load you've put on the house and everything. So next one down, we've got battery information, charged and discharged. Battery state of charge on here. We can click in, we can go full screen. You can do all these download PDF files if that's the sort of thing you want to do. Here we've got all our device um, information. You can go into settings and do all that. And then we've got our social contribution, which is at the bottom. We've you know explained that. So if we hover over that one, that just says total energy of CO2 reduced. CO2 emissions reduction can be modified in the edit power plant. You know, in the settings here, you can actually go in and set how much you get paid if you're exporting it to grid. When we don't get, we're not exporting anything to the grid at the moment, and we never will do. So we're not set up for that. We can come back up here. We can click on the energy button. This is today. So this, you know, this is our solar curve for today. We had a bit of a spike just then. So we can click it onto the day view. So this day we got 11 kilowatts coming in, 7.3, 9.1, 1, 0.7. Click on the month, that's just for um, January so far. 
But if we click back to 2022, this is last year. So last January we did 205. I don't think we're going to beat that this time. And then you can see what we've got going through here. And you can, you know, we can even go back to the year before when we installed it. So that was our first December, 145. And that's pretty much on that page. And these other things, it's not worth going into that and showing you what that's all about. But I so say you can go right into it and in depth and print stuff off if you want to. And it's all good stuff. So that is pretty much the Grow What Shine Phone app in a nutshell. Um, it's probably not the best app out there for this sort of thing and it's probably not the worst. It does its job. Uh, as I say, it is only a data logger, so it'll only log information every five minutes. Um, if you want something that's real time, it's not going to be for you. I can't find any other power monitoring system where it can monitor the solar coming in and the output and the battery state um, that's standalone. If you know of anything out there, let me know in the comments. All these ones that I've seen that have got the clamps that go around the cables, they've, they're all controlled via a, a server, so they've got to be on the internet and go off. I can't find anything that's standalone unless you I have seen people make stuff themselves with all these if they're that way inclined I'm not <laughs> quick and easy solution a 25 euro dongle in the inverter the apps free of charge and it does its job um, with the dongle in place if you've got a problem with your inverter like we have had a couple of issues with it I can get in touch with the Grow What representative that serves us, they can actually log into our inverter and see what's going on. It gets logged, say, in a server, so they can look at the same stuff and more than what we can. So it is quite handy to have. If you're having issues, get in touch with them. They can log into your system and um, sort of have a look remotely. So that's, a, that's quite a good thing. But uh, other than that, it's working well. Uh, you do tend to, oh, let's just see what the battery's doing. Because <laughs> it's easy, it's on your iPad or whatever, just press the button. Oh, look, we're at 50%. Um, but I say, if you want real-time information, you just go to the inverter, press the screen, scroll through the menus. Um, it is just a shame that it's done for a server remotely and it's not real-time. But, you know... Beggars can't be choosers. It was a cheap inverter, or cheapish. There are cheaper out there. We didn't want to go too cheap, but there are more expensive ones. So the more expensive ones, I don't know what their apps are like, you know, monitoring devices and bits and pieces like that. Who knows? But uh, that's my little overview of this Grow What app. So I've had a few people requesting having a look at the app and seeing what it's all about. And there you have it. So... I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.